So Gabrielle Union was on the Late Show with uh, Seth Myers, and she had some comments about how Jalen Hurts was stirring up a little noise in their group and her girlfriend's group chat. And uh, Odell Beckham Jr. too. I'm gonna play what she said. Do you, as a family, do you yourself still watch and root for sports post playing career? Oh yes. All right. I, I have a problem. I become everybody's Mama June. Um, <laughs> so we we have like we have a we have a suite at, at SoFi. So we watch the Chargers and the Rams. And I have to say, the Rams with Odell. All the women in my group chat are like, I am a Rams fan. <laughs> um, and I'm like, girl, you are an Odell fan. You, I, no one comes that early, but we're right. like, he's stretching. Uh, get those hammies, Odell. Um, so a couple seemingly harmless jokey jokes, right? But uh, stick with me, though. I'm play a couple more clips, and I want to ask you again if it's that harmless. But he go to Jalen Hurts' clip. But growing up in the Bay Area, you're a 49er fan. So we've been watching, you know, the 49ers. That's nice to have a rooting thing. interest going into championship weekend. That's a nice feeling. Well, again, with the group chat. Um, so apparently the group chat is all throwing all of our weight behind Jalen Hurts. Oh, interesting. Um, He's the handsome this year? Uh, apparently. He's, yeah. Uh, he, is, uh, he, does, he does well for himself. <laughs> um, I'd like to go home to a happy home, so I'm not going to comment there. <laughs> but... The streets are saying... Uh, the uh, streets. Look, you're hearing things. You're not saying things. You're uh, hearing things. For the older kids, he's like the new Warren Moon. Um, <laughs> She's stupid for that. But anyway, this is where it gets interesting in these clips that I did in the video in a little while ago. Keeping up with his activities. And yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, that's what you're doing? Oh, you're going to feel this one. Right. And okay, okay. I just felt entitled to it as well. I was paying all the bills. I was working my... Off, and I felt like that's what comes, the spoils of riches. Yeah. And like my dad before me, whoever has the most gets to do whatever they want is what yes, I thought. Yes, wow. yes, 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 yes. And yes, yes. it was just dysfunctional from day one. Yeah. Now this last clip gonna bring it on home, but keep in mind she married Chris Howard after he was out of the NFL and she paid all the bills, so she felt entitled to cheat. Now D Well still doing well for herself, but just listen. Super horny for other people. Yeah, well, I was horny for validation. Yes. And having certain kinds of guys like me and want me, that made me feel like I was worthy and good and valuable and deserving. She's telling you a couple things. If your money ain't right, it's going to be a problem. She's probably going to do what she wanted to do, which I wouldn't advise her doing that within the marriage because you can always just leave a divorce. Why would you have to do that in the marriage? So she also says she seeks the validation of a certain type of guy. And... Odell Beckham Jr. and Jalen Hurts fit the description of what type of guy that seems to moisten her box. You dig what I'm saying? Look at D-Wade. She met D-Wade in the prime of his career. That's where Jalen Hurts is right now. Odell Beckham, not so much, but Jalen Hurts is in the prime of his career right now in a Super Bowl, and she's on national TV expressing an affinity for him in so many words. So just imagine if Jalen Hurts and Odell Beckham Jr. start liking all Gabrielle Union's pictures. And, and making little statements here and there, flirting with her, right? Right? Validation, right? She's going to gush and blush over that, right? Now you just started something. But listen, if that's how you feel, women, that's cool. If you feel like your man numbers as far as his income can't drop below a certain level, then keep your standards as far as what you what you held to be. If you feel like throwing in your man's face every two minutes how many likes your pictures got and how many fire emojis dudes putting under your pics and how much more money they make than you, by all means, do your thing. But don't. Be surprised when a man takes the same liberties. When he says, yeah, I'm going to have a problem if your weight gets up to a certain height and you start to get a little too big, I'm going to have a problem. I'm going to start doing what I want to do or I'm going to be out. Don't be surprised if his money is up and your weight is up too, that he starts seeking validation from the young, thinner, Coke bottle shaped tenderonies that's running around on, on, in the streets and on Instagram. If he starts showing you them likes. Especially if he can't get no head, but on his birthday, out you. At least if you wake up getting up, you at least you can tighten him up every chance you get, huh? Get me together. I'm just saying. <laughs> but listen, D Wade is not doing bad for himself. His net worth is like 170 million right now. He has a ownership stake in the Utah Jazz, so his money is tied up in there. So he's doing well for himself after his career. Gabrielle Union is worth like 45 million. She's doing well for herself. She got a prenup. You know what I'm saying? But they do have one child together. And I think she signed a prenup with D-Wade because of her experiences with her first husband. He wasn't doing so well. She was paying the bills, so she signed a prenup. But listen to this here, though. Jalen Hurts is on the third year of his, like, $6 million contract. So he's in the Super Bowl right now, 
and he is due a new contract after another year. They may get it out the way after this Super Bowl, but he is definitely going to get a hefty amount of money. 200 plus million is to be expected. I mean, I think Russ just got 250 million out the Broncos. So listen here when I tell you, her sneaking and winking at Jalen Hurts, it, it's not something just out of the blue. You dig what I'm saying? Women do stuff like this. They, they, they be maneuvering. You know what I'm saying? And listen, I ain't saying it's wrong with nothing. I ain't saying there's nothing wrong with having standards. But I am saying I, I believe love in today's world is, is very conditional. It's, it's become more conditional in trade and barter than, than ever before. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you used to be able to kind of depend on your girl staying with you through some stuff or or you staying with your girl through some stuff or this, that, and the other. I just think we do need to keep that in mind as far as just a society. Like, you know, every chick is like, uh, he ain't making 100000 uh, uh, You know what I'm saying? Like, who do you even know that's making 100000 Oh, Most of the chicks that's talking like this. I mean, most of the chicks talking like this probably making 20000 a year and shopping that rainbow. Cut it out. You don't even know nobody make 100000 and you going off. It's just me and it's more realistic about the pecking order of where we stand in life. Like, we we know if you out of our range. It's like Ben Simmons at the free throw line. Like, we'll shoot the shot, but we don't expect to hit it, though. And we'll shoot and flirt with you and all of it. But listen, we, we know when you out of our league. We know. Like if I was to see Coco Jones and her luscious lips out somewhere. Like first of all, you got to be in Hollywood somewhere just to bump into it. But let's say I was out there flirting with her and she threw it. She was okay, when you going to take me out? Uh, what you, uh, hold on, let me get my. What kind of phone is that? Glasses on. I got to calculate some stuff. How this works. The glasses ain't got no lens in them. I, see, I, I let the first comment fly, but y'all be wanting to be in focus with me. I took my lenses down because they had to readjust my eyeballs, okay? Get my reading glass. Don't mess around and miss your blessing. Trying to pay attention to the wrong stuff, okay? I'm a diamond in the rough, <laughs> you know? Is that how you calculating with shades on, though? Okay, my calculations ain't that enough. I just put these glasses on so I can get an uninterrupted look at that side of me before you calculate them toes to walk up out of here. Toes looking good, too. And soon as you turn around and walk out of here, and that thing get the job. I'm taking these glasses. There it is. I told you I'm taking them off. Lord Jesus. Give me a little time. I'm going to get my calculations together. We'll get it together. I just think men deal in reality a little better than women do sometimes. Like, if you're approaching a woman as fine as Coco Jones, you know you got to have a certain type of dollar amount in your pocket. Then add that she has the career that she has and she's doing as well as she is. You definitely got to bump that dollar amount up. And you may have to add a little status to your name to be around the type of people that she's around. And a certain type of way to talk and, and navigate through these circles. But women think the only prerequisite... For them to deal with the top 10% of men in the country, men that make 100000 and up and all of that stuff, is just to be cute. And then when they ask these men, what are your conditions? Because we just discussed the conditions that women are talking about with Gabrielle Union saying, you got to do this, you got to do that. And women, you know, you got to have some money. Women ask these men, what do you want? Men say, I want you to be feminine. I want you to cook. I want you to maybe do this, maybe do that. They get offended, turn off the, they don't want to hear no more. No, nope, ain't doing it, right? But these are the same men that you'll ask to slap Mike Tyson if he grab your booty, to snake your drain, to work on your car, to plow the snow, to cut the grass. So you ask them what they want in return. You won't give it to them. But then in, you give us, what, degrees, a bunch of degrees, and you make your own money, like, in a strong, independent mindset. It's not what they ask for. So men come with conditions, too. I just think that women confuse those conditions with that they can be slept with so they think that they'll be married by these men, you know what I'm saying? And I'm glad that men and women have standards today because let's let's be honest, when we were young and dumb and living life crazy, our, our standards usually put us in bad places as far as where we are when we get to older age. Children out of wedlock, baby daddies, baby mamas, this, that, and other, a whole lot of disarray. So I'm glad that we have standards and conditions, but I just wish the world wasn't so heavily reliant on being conditional in relationships and pushing all the love out of it. Because I'm just saying, numbers show most women leave the marriages and they say, well, I wasn't happy. And it's just the honest truth of it is most women just want the marriage for the show, for the ring, for the Instagram pictures and all of that. But once you get into the thick of it, the longevity of it, it gets hard. It's hard to deal with. That's why you have to keep up on your end of the conditions. D Wade is going to have to try his best to keep them numbers up and keep um, 
validating his wife and hoping that his wife seeks his validation more than she seek younger, more athletic men like Jalen Hurts and all them, you know, so that he can keep his wife entertained. But for women and men, I just don't think it's healthy to keep dangling other options in front of your mate. Like, well, if you don't do what they doing for me, I'm going to leave. I figure you can put that energy into building it more than dangling what you might tear down. Because at any moment, she can be like, you know what? I'm not happy. I'm going to leave. You got a prenup, but she'll get a, a decent buck for the, the child that they have together. And that's a sad place to be because it's just another broken relationship, you know? So I'm hoping that men and women can learn to have conditions, but still realize that we in this for the long haul. If we're together, we're together. We're going to stick it out together. Tell me what you think. It's your boy, Pete Camp. Get at your boy.